بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما Last week we spoke about Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu and the importance that he placed upon knowledge and the honor and respect that he gave to the people of knowledge. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhu he mentioned a number of qualities that the people of knowledge should have in terms of how they should spread that knowledge to the people, the means and the methodology and the substance of what they are spreading to the people. So you have knowledge and you have to spread it to the people in the right way. You have to have wisdom in the way that you give that knowledge to those who are listening to you. So it takes a person of wisdom and understanding to do this. So there may be many people who have knowledge, but that's not enough. It's important for you to have the ability to convey that knowledge to the people. So Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an mentioned some qualities that a person of knowledge should have in terms of how he conveys his knowledge to the people. Ali radiallahu an he said, "Inna al-faqih." حق الفقيه من لم يقنط الناس من رحمة الله ولم يرخص لهم في معاص الله that the true faqih the true person of knowledge and understanding is a person who when he conveys the knowledge that he has he does not make people lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes you will find Someone who is giving a talk or giving a lecture or maybe even giving a khutbah and all the time All he speaks about is the punishment of Allah the fire the Sins that the people are committing that will lead them to the fire of Jahannam And of course, this is something that has to be talked about But it's not the only thing that can be talked about Rather, you talk about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you also have to mention the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you give people a chance to turn back. But if you're always talking about you have committed this sin, you're going to the fire, then people lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you tell them, yes, you commit these sins, they can lead you to the fire. But as long as you're still alive, the door of repentance is open. So repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will forgive you. So yes, you have to convey the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people, but at the same time you have to convey the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them as well. So Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, he said, إِنَّ الْفَقِيهِ حَقَّ الْفَقِيهِ مَنْ لَمْ يُقَنِّطِ النَّاسِ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ That a true faqih, a true person of knowledge and understanding is someone who does not cause the people to lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَمْ يُرَخِّصْ لَهُمْ فِي مَعَاصِ اللَّهِ And also he does not give them uh, a license to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You'll find some people who consider themselves to be people of knowledge, they will make every type of sin and disobedience okay. They'll say, you know, these sins that people are committing, this society, it's difficult to avoid sin. So if a person did this, if a person did that, you know, it's okay, no problem, right? They will, they will lighten the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They, they will make the people think that it's really not such a big deal. That, you know, and the people who say that you know, this is haram and that is haram, they're too strict and they're too extreme. And they will open the door to sins for the people. That it's not really such a big deal. Right? You can do this and you can do that. And they will basically give people permission to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, a true faqih, a true person of knowledge, he will never do something like this. So he said, وَلَمْ يُرَخِّصْ لَهُمْ فِي مَعَاصِ اللَّهِ 
He does not give them a license to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَمْ يُؤَمِّنْهُمْ مِنْ عَذَابِ اللَّهِ And he does not give them a feeling of safety from the punishment of Allah. Right? He does mention the punishment of Allah. It's not the only thing that he mentions, but he does make sure that you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes. Right? He, he knows how to convey the message with balance. Not making people lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time, not making them feel safe from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a true person of knowledge will be able to convey to the people fear of Allah, and at the same time, hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اِعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْعِقَابِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Know that surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe in His punishment and surely He is the most forgiving and the most merciful. نَبِّئْ عِبَادِي أَنِّي أَنَا الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنَّ عَذَابِي هُوَ الْعَذَابُ الْأَلِيمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, say or inform my servants that surely I am the most forgiving and the most merciful and surely my punishment is a painful punishment. So yes, a true person of knowledge, he will be able to convey this. That you should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should fear His punishment. His punishment is severe. But at the same time, you should have hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you should ask Him for forgiveness because surely He is the most forgiving and the most merciful. Right? You ha a true person of knowledge will be able to convey this message in a balanced way like this. So He will not always only talk about the fire of Jahannam and the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not talk about anything else. Because that will make people lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, he will not talk only about the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and never talk about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No. That will make people feel safe from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a true person of knowledge will be able to convey the message in a balanced way. So that the people fear Allah and the people have hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiyallahu anhi continued, he said, وَلَمْ يَدَعِ الْقُرْآنَ رَغْبَةً عَنْهُ إِلَىٰ غَيْرِهِ He said that a true person of knowledge will not leave the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and focus more on other things. The main foundation of the preaching of a person of knowledge, it will be based upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, based upon the Qur'an. That's the foundation. So when you find a person of knowledge never quoting the Qur'an, he's not ever talking about the Qur'an. He's just saying, oh, you know, this, this person said this, and that person said this, and, you know, this book says this, and that book says this, and he's not quoting the Qur'an, he's not talking about the Qur'an at all, then this person really is not a person of knowledge, not really a person of understanding. A true person of understanding, the basis of his preaching, it will be based upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, he continued, he said, إِنَّهُ لَا خِيْرَ فِي عِبَادَةٍ لَا عِلْمَ فِيهَا There is no good in worship that is not, not based upon knowledge. If a person is worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he doesn't have any knowledge, then what type of worship will he do if he doesn't even know what he is doing? If a person doesn't have knowledge, then you know even the type of worship that he does he may get involved in innovated practices of worship. He may be doing things that he thinks is worship. He thinks is bringing him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but actually it's not because it's an innovation, because this person doesn't have knowledge and he's doing things that don't have any basis. So he said, إِنَّهُ لَا خَيْرَ فِي عِبَادَةٍ لَا عِلْمَ فِيهَا There's no good in, in worship if it is not based upon knowledge. وَلَا عِلْمٍ لَا فَهْمَ فِيهِ And there is no good in knowledge that does not lead to understanding. So knowledge, it's not only just gathering information. Rather, it is understanding what that information means and implementing it in the right way. Right? So anyone can, you know, memorize knowledge and, you know, memorize some words. Right? But is it really going to benefit him if he doesn't understand this knowledge? So Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he said, there is no good in knowledge that does not lead to understanding. Because it is only if you understand something that you will be able to live according to it and implement it. وَلَا قِرَاءَةٍ لَا تَدَبُّرَ فِيهَا And there is no good in reading without reflecting. 
So a person who reads the Qur'an but does not reflect upon it, does not ponder on it, does not think about it, right? He will not get the full benefit. Of course, you know, even reading the Qur'an, even if a person doesn't understand Arabic but they're reading the Qur'an, he will get reward for that. As the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ قَرَأَ حَرْفًا مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ فَلَهُ بِهَا حَسَنَةً وَالْحَسَنَةُ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا لَا أَقُولْ أَلِفْ لَا مِمْ حَرْفٌ وَلَكِنْ أَلِفٌ حَرْفٌ وَلَا مُنْ حَرْفٌ وَمِمْ مُنْ حَرْفٌ The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever reads one letter from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will have one good deed written for him. And every good deed is multiplied ten times. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, I don't say that alif lam mim is one letter, but alif is one letter, lam is one letter, and mim is one letter. So you recite alif lam mim, you get three hasanat. And that's multiplied by ten, so it's thirty hasanat. Right? Thirty good deeds by reciting alif lam mim. So just, you know, this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So reciting it in and of itself is a great reward. But you will not get the full benefit of, of the recitation and the reading except if you understand and reflect and ponder upon what you're reading. And this is actually the purpose of the Qur'an. The purpose why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an. For people to, to reflect upon it. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كِتَابٌ أَنزَلْنَاهُ إِلَيْكَ مُبَارَكٌ لِيَدَّبَّرُوا آيَاتِهِ وَلِيَتَذَكَّرَ أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ We sent down this book that is blessed so that the people may reflect and ponder upon its verses and it serves as a reminder to the people of understanding. So reflection upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ali radiallahu an was emphasizing the importance of pondering and reflecting upon the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you see, he's, he's telling the people of knowledge how to convey their knowledge to the people, right? So he himself was a person of great knowledge and he was teaching the people of knowledge how to spread that knowledge to the people in the right way. Also from the wisdom of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, and you know there are many statements, many sayings of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an that, you know, that can be written in gold. His, he, was, he was a very wise person and he knew how to choose his words very beautifully to convey what he was trying to say. And you know his words have a deep and profound impact on anyone who reflects and ponders upon them. Also from the from the wise statements of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, he said, "Iyakum walistinan birrijal," that beware of imitating other people. Beware of taking another person as your example. And then he said he explained why. Why you, why you should be very careful about taking another person as your example and following him and copying him. And of course, this is, this is in reference to people other than the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. As for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course you follow him. You try to live your life exactly according to how he lived his life to the best of your ability. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Surely in the Messenger of Allah, you have a good example. So yes, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you, you follow him as much as you can. But Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه here, he's speaking about other people. He's speaking about other people from the Muslims. Be careful about, you know, following someone and imitating a person. He said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالِسْتِنَانْ بِالرِّجَالِ Beware of, of, of following and imitating other people. فَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ يَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ ثُمَّ يَنْقَلِبُ لِعِلْمِ اللَّهِ فِيهِ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ فَيَمُوتُ وَهُوَ مِنْ أَهْلِ النَّارِ He said because a man, if you're following a person, people, there may be a person who performs the actions of the people of Jannah, meaning he's always doing good deeds. But then towards the end of his life, he changes because of something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about this person. Maybe outwardly he was doing good deeds, but there was something in him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So towards the end of his life, this person changed and he started doing the actions of the people of the fire. He started doing evil things. And he died upon that and he became from the people of the fire. وَإِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ فَيَنْقَلِبُ لِعِلْمِ اللَّهِ فِيهِ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيَمُوتُ وَهُوَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ And there may be a person who does bad deeds, the, the actions of the people of the fire. But then towards the end of his life, 
he changes because of some knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has about this person. Maybe there was some goodness in his heart. Even though he was doing bad things, there was something good about him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved. So towards the end of this person's life, this person changed and he became a good person, started doing the actions of the people of Jannah and he died upon that and he became from the people of Jannah. So what Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu is trying to say here is that people can change. Right? A person can be, go from good to bad, a person can go from bad to good. So be careful of imitating a person. Because you may be imitating a person and then when he changes, you also imitate the change. Right? So that can be something that's dangerous if he changes from good to bad. So beware of doing this. And then he said, فَإِن كُنْتُمْ لَا بُدَّ فَاعِلِينَ فَبِالْأَمْوَاتْ لَا بِالْأَحْيَا And if you have to imitate someone, if you insist on imitating a person, then imitate someone who has already died. Not people who are still alive. Because you're not sure about people who are still alive. They can change. But a person who has already died and he died upon goodness, if you have to follow someone, then follow the people who have already died, not someone that is already, not someone that is still alive, right? So this was from the depth of the knowledge that Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anh had. Also from the knowledge of Ali radiallahu anh is that he would know when to admit that he didn't know something, right? He was humble enough to say, I don't know when he didn't know. And he was also humble enough to correct himself if it became apparent to him that he made a mistake. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, with the depth of knowledge that he had and you know, the great of amount of ilm that he had, still he was a human being and he was not a prophet, he did not receive revelation, so he could make a mistake from time to time. And when it would become clear to him that he had made a mistake, he would quickly correct himself without without feeling ashamed to do so. There is no shame in admitting your mistakes. There is a narration where it is said that سَأَلَ رَجُلٌ عَلِيًّا رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ عَنْ مَسْأَلَ فَقَالَ فِيهَا That Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه was asked about a mas'ala. He was asked about an issue and he gave his answer regarding it. فَقَالَ الرَّجُلْ لَيْسَ كَذَلِكَ يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَكِنْ كَذَا وَكَذَا And then a man said, يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ I don't think you gave the right answer. Rather, I think it's this and this and this. And then he gave him his reasons why he felt Ali رضي الله عنه was wrong. So Ali رضي الله عنه listened to what this man had to say and he thought about it and he realized, yes, you are right and I was wrong. So he said clearly, أَصَبْتَ وَأَخْطَأْتُ وَفَوْقَ كُلِّ ذِي عِلْمٍ عَلِيمٍ he said, you are right and I am wrong and there is someone who is more knowledgeable over every person of knowledge. A person may have knowledge but there's always someone above him who has more knowledge. Right? So look at his humbleness. Even though he was extremely knowledgeable, he would easily accept and admit if he made a mistake. Right? So a real person of knowledge, he will not claim to know everything. He will never claim that I know everything. So that's why, you know, when a person answers every single question that you give him, he never says, I don't know, or he never says, okay, you know, I may have said something and now I'm correcting myself, right? A person who always has an answer to every single thing that you ask him, you know, be careful about this person. Be careful about this person. A true person of knowledge will say, I don't know when he doesn't know. Once a man came to Imam Malik rahimahullah from a far off land, Imam Malik ibn Anas rahimahullah, he was known to be the most knowledgeable person in Medina, the most knowledgeable person of his time. And a man traveled from a far off land to meet Imam Malik in Medina to ask him some questions from the people of his land. So. This man told his people, I'm going to Medina, I'm going to visit Imam Malik, so if you have any questions, you know, give me the questions and I will ask them to Imam Malik and when I come back, I'll give you the answers that he gave. So he collected 40 questions from his people, 40 questions from his people. And then he traveled all the way to Medina and he met Imam Malik. And he said, I have these questions for you from my people, Ya yeah, Imam. And he said, okay, you can ask me the questions, 40 questions. Out of those 40 questions, Imam Malik, he answered four questions. And to 36 questions, he said, I don't know. 
He said, I don't know, to 36 questions, and he answered four questions. And this is the most knowledgeable person of his time. He didn't mind saying, I don't know, when he was not sure about something or if he didn't know something. He said, I don't know. That's okay. So then, you know, the man who asked him these questions, he was a little bit frustrated and worried. And he said, I'm, I have to go back to these people. And what am I going to say to them, Ya Imam? That you didn't answer 36 questions. You only answered four questions. What should I say to my people about these questions that you didn't answer? What should I say to them? And then he said, I'll tell you exactly what to say to them. Say to them that Malik said, I don't know. Tell them that Malik said, I don't know. I don't care. Let them, let them think that I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What's the big deal? Right? So it's, they never had any type of pride or any type of ego Right? The true scholars are people who will say, I don't know, very easily. And they won't mind saying that at all. And if they happen to say something wrong, which can happen from time to time, when they realize that it is wrong, they will correct their mistakes. Whereas a pretender to knowledge, a pretender to knowledge will always have an answer to any question that you give him. He'll never say, I don't know. Right? There's a story of a man who wanted to be known as a person of knowledge. He really was not a person of knowledge, but he saw, that, he saw the respect that the ulama had, and he wanted to get that respect without taking the effort to reach that level of knowledge to get that respect. Right? He wanted to be known as a scholar, even though he was not a person of knowledge at all. So he thought that, okay, if I'm living in the big city, where there are many people of knowledge, I will never be able to pass myself as a person of knowledge. So I'm just going to go and live in some small village where the people there are not very educated. So if I live there, then I can pass myself as a person of knowledge. The people will think that I'm a, a great scholar, a person of knowledge. So he goes to that small village and he starts living there. And he passes himself off as, you know, this great scholar, this great sheikh who has such knowledge, right? He starts talking to the people and quoting this and quoting that, right? Any question that the people ask him, he always has an answer to it. Whether he knows the answer or doesn't know the answer, he makes something up and gives any answer so that the people will consider him a person of great knowledge. So he did this for a while and then the people started to get a little bit suspicious. Like, you know, this, this sheikh, he's so knowledgeable Everything that we ask him, he knows the answer to it. What is he doing living in a small village like this? This person should be like a big mufti in, in, the, in the big city. Why is he living in a small village with us when he's a person of such great knowledge? So they started to get a little bit suspicious. So a few members of the community, they got together and said, let's test him to see if he really is who he says he was, his, who he says he is. He answers every question. He has never said, I don't know, to any question that we asked him. So let us test, you know, if he really knows these answers or if he's just pulling the wool over our eyes. So there were a few people in that gathering and they said, look, what we're going to do to test him, we're going to make up a fake word. We're going to make up a fake word and then we're going to ask him about this, this issue. We're going we're gonna to use this word and say, ya, ya Sheikh, we have some ikhtilaf, we have some difference of opinion about this thing. And it's going to be a made-up word, something that doesn't even exist. So if he says, I never heard about this, what is this? I never heard this word, then we know that he's truthful. Because that word doesn't exist. But if he gives an answer, even though we just made up the word ourselves, if he still gives an answer, then we know that he's, he's a faker and that he's a liar. So they said, okay, we need to come up with a fake word to ask him about it. So they decided, okay, everyone in the gathering, give one letter and then we will put all those letters together and we'll make a word. So they asked the first person, oh, give me any letter from the Arabic alphabet. The first person said, kha. Said, okay, the next one, he said, noon. Next one, he said, fa. The next one, he said, sheen. The next one, he said, alif. The next one, he said, ra. Said, okay, that's enough. Now we'll make a word out of these letters, a fake word. So the word that came out was khun fushar. There's no such thing as khun fushar. It's just a made up word. So we're going to go ask the sheikh, ya yeah, sheikh, we have some difference of opinion. We, we, we want some, some clarity regarding the issue of the khun fushar. Can you, can you tell us about it? Can you give us the hukum, the ruling of the khun fushar? So this is the plan. So they go to the sheikh and they say, Ya sheikh, 
we have some ikhtilaf on an issue. You know, me and my friends, we have some difference of opinion on this issue. And then the Shaykh, he said, Subhanallah, atakhtalifuna wa ana hay. He said, you have ikhtilaf, you have difference of opinion while I am still alive amongst you. How can you have difference of opinion? I'm here, I will clear up everything that you have. Look at the arrogance of this guy. And then they said to him, Ya Shaykh, can you give us the ruling of the Khun Fushar? Can you give us the ruling of the Khun Fushar? He said, yes, of course. The Khun Fushar, it is a plant that grows in Yemen. And some of the farmers they feed that plant to their animals, to their cows and to their goats. And what it causes when they eat this plant, it causes them to, uh, to retain milk in their udders. The milk doesn't come out. So the udders where the milk is stored, it becomes very big. So when the udder becomes very big like that, then they sell these cows and they sell these goats. Uh, and, and it's a type of deception. Because they make it look like, look how much milk this goat can carry. Look how much milk this cow can carry. And they sell it like that to trick the people. So they feed their animals the khun fushar. And then when the milk is retained, they sell those animals for a higher price. And this is ghish, this is deception. And this is haram. And then he said, the poets of the past, they actually mentioned the khun fushar in their poetry. One of the poets, he said, لَقَدْ عَقَدَتْ مَحَبَّتُكُمْ فُؤَادِي كَمَا عَقَدَ الْحَلِيبَ الْخُنْ فُشَارُ The poet, he said that your love has captured my heart just like the khun fushar captures the milk inside of the animals. So he kept going on. And then he said, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and he was going to make up a hadith about the khun fushar. And he was going to attribute that to the Prophet ﷺ. Then they stopped him. They said, stop, stop, stop. You lied upon the plants. There's no plant called Khun Fushar. You lied upon Yemen. You said that, that that plant grows in Yemen. You lied upon the animals. You said that the animals eat that Khun Fushar. You lied upon the poets. You said that the poets, they mention Khun Fushar in their poetry. Now stop before you lie upon the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So they caught him in his lie. Right? So the point here is that a person who doesn't have knowledge will always have an answer to every question that you give them because they don't want to say, I don't know. But as for a person of knowledge, he will know his limits and when he doesn't know something, he will very humbly say, I don't know. And he will not feel shy or he will not feel ashamed to say, I don't know, right? So this is a very important quality of the people of knowledge. When you don't know, say Allahu A'lam. Allah knows best, right? So Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, this, this was his way and this is what he wanted to convey to the people of knowledge as well. If you don't know, say you don't know. There's no shame in that. Once a man came to Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, and he asked him, about some issue and Ali radiallahu an he said to him very clearly la ilma li biha that I, I really don't know about this I don't know and then after Ali radiallahu an said la ilma li biha like I don't know then Ali radiallahu an he said he felt so good to say I don't know he said wa bardaha ala kabidi how cool this feels inside me when I say I don't know I feel very comfortable very relaxed Right? Because I don't know and I tell them I don't know, then my responsibility is done. Alhamdulillah, I feel relaxed when I say I don't know. Right? So this was the attitude of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. Also from the wisdom of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an, he said to the people, لا يرجونا عبد إلا ربه ولا يخاف ولا يخافنا إلا ذنبه that a slave should not have Hope except in his Lord. Connect all of your hopes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't, don't connect your hopes to other people or this organization or that organization. No. Keep your hopes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never let you down. And don't fear anything except your own sins. And what that means is fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your own sins. Don't fear people. Rather fear the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may come to you because of your own sins. 
مَن لَا يَعْلَمْ أَنْ يَتَعَلَّمْ And the person who doesn't know, the person who doesn't have knowledge, he should not feel shy to seek knowledge and learn. If you don't know something, learn it. And you should not feel embarrassed or you should not feel shy about learning something. وَلَا يَسْتَحْيِي إِذَا سُئِلَ عَمَّا لَا يَعْلَمْ أَنْ يَقُولَ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمْ And a person should not feel shy that if he is asked about something that he doesn't know, he should say Allahu A'lam. Don't feel shy to say Allahu A'lam. I don't know. And say only Allah knows best. Allah knows best if you don't know. Don't feel ashamed to do that. وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ مَنْزِلَةَ الصَّبْرِ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ كَمَنْزِلَةِ الرَّأْسِ مِنَ الْجَسَدِ And know that the position of patience in Iman is like the position of the head on the body. Can a body survive without a head? It cannot survive without a head. In the same way, Iman, the, you cannot have full Iman without patience. فَإِذَا ذَهَبَ الرَّأْسُ ذَهَبَ الْجَسَدُ وَإِذَا ذَهَبَ الصَّبْرُ ذَهَبَ الْإِيمَانِ So that if a person's head is removed, then he has, his, his body becomes useless. In the same way, if a person does not have patience, then he loses his Iman. Right? This was from the wisdom of Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه. Also from the wisdom of Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله عنه, he said, لَيْسَ الْخَيْرُ أَنْ يَكْثُرَ مَالُكَ وَوَلَدُكَ He said, True goodness is not having lots of money and lots of children. وَلَكِنَّ الْخَيْرَ أَنْ يَكْثُرَ عِلْمُكَ But true goodness is having more knowledge. وَيَعْظُمَ حِلْمُكَ and having great forbearance and patience. وَأَن تُبَاهِ النَّاسِ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّكَ And to differentiate yourselves from others by worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. Competing with other people, not in gathering more wealth and having more children, but competing with each other in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing more good deeds. That is where real goodness is. فَإِنْ أَحْسَنْتَ حَمِدْتَ اللَّهِ and if you did good, then you praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When asa'ta istaghfarta Allah. And if you did something bad, then you ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is goodness. When you do good, you praise Allah for allowing you to do that good. When you commit a sin, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness from that sin. Wala khayra fi dunya illa li ahadi rajulain. And there is no goodness in this dunya except with two people, two types of people. رَجُلٌ أَذْنَبَ ذَنْبًا فَهُوَ تَدَارَكَ ذَلِكَ بِتَوْبَةً A person who committed a sin, but then he realized it, and he followed it up with asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness and repenting. That is good. وَرَجُلٌ يُسَارِعُ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ And a person who is quick to do good. These are the two good things in this dunya. A person who is quick to do good or a person who may commit a sin but then he realizes it and he quickly asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. So you see these beautiful, uh, you know, gems from Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. You know, when a person is a person of knowledge and a person of taqwa, then that knowledge and taqwa manifests itself on the tongue of that person. A person has knowledge and taqwa that will come out on his tongue. And this is very clear from this beautiful speech of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. Also from the wisdom of Ali radiallahu an, he said, "Inna akhwa fama akhafu alaykum ittiba'u al-hawa wa tulu al-amal." He said, "The thing that I fear the most for you is following your desires and having hope of a long life." فَأَمَّا اتِّبَاعُ الْهَوَى فَيَصُدُّ عَنِ الْحَقِّ As for following the desires, it prevents a person from the truth. It keeps a person away from the truth. When you're following your desires, you are not doing what is right. وَأَمَّا طُولُ الْأَمَلْ فَيُنْسِ الْآخِرَةِ And you know, a person having hope of a long life, thinking, okay, I have so many years to do this and that. Just thinking about how long his life is going to be, it makes him forget about the akhirah. It makes him forget about the hereafter. أَلَا وَإِنَّ الدُّنْيَا قَدْ تَرَحَّلَتْ مُدْبِرَةً وَإِنَّ الْآخِرَةَ قَدْ تَرَحَّلَتْ مُقْبِلَةً As for the dunya, you're going to leave it behind. And as for the hereafter, it is right in front of you. It is coming forward. وَلِكُلِّ وَاحِدَةٍ مِّنْهُمَا بَنُونَ and each one of them has its children. The dunya has its children, 
and the akhirah has its children. There are children of this world and there are children of the hereafter. فَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الدُّنْيَا So be from the children of the hereafter. Do not be from the children of this world. فَإِنَّ الْيَوْمَ عَمَلْ وَلَا حِسَابٍ وَغَدًا حِسَابٍ وَلَا عَمَلٍ Because today there is work with no account. But tomorrow it will be account with no work. Right? So this is the place to do your work. And the hereafter, there's no more chance to do anything, but that is the place of being held to account. So keep this in mind. Look at this beautiful wisdom from Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, who was also from the great companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and was known for his knowledge, specifically his knowledge of tafsir of the Quran. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, even he praised Ali radiallahu an and his beautiful wisdom. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, he says, مَن تَفَعْتُ بِكَلَامِ أَحَدٍ بَعْدَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مِثْلْ مَن تَفَعْتُ بِكَلَامْ كَتَبَهُ إِلَيَّ عَلِي ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. He said, I did not benefit from the speech of any person after the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam like I benefited from the speech of Ali radiallahu anhu that he wrote to me. Ali radiallahu anhu, he wrote a letter to Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. And what did he write in this letter? Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he mentions the contents of this letter. He said that Ali radiallahu anhu wrote to him, كَتَبَ إِلَيَّ أَمَّا بَعَدْ فَإِنَّ الْمَرْأَ يَسُرُّهُ إِدْرَاكُ مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيَفُوتَ وَيَسُوءُهُ فَوْتَ مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ لِيُدْرِكَ He said, you know, the human being, he becomes happy if something comes to him, some good thing comes to him that he wasn't expecting. Like, I wasn't expecting this to come to me, but alhamdulillah, something good came to me. This makes a person happy. And he gets upset if he was expecting to get something, but he misses out on it. He was trying to get something, and he was expecting and hoping that he would get it, but he didn't get it. That makes him upset and that makes him sad. فَلْيَكُنْ سُرُورُكَ بِمَا نِلْتَ مِنْ أَمْرِ آخِرَتِكَ So he advised Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma. He said, let your happiness be for that which you have achieved in terms of your hereafter. Some good deeds that you have done that will benefit you in the hereafter. Let your happiness be based upon that. وَلْيَكُنْ أَسَفُكَ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكَ مِنْهَا And let your sadness be what you have missed out in terms of doing good deeds. وَمَا نِلْتَ مِنْ أَمْرِ دُنْيَاكَ فَلَا تَكُنْ بِهِ فَرِحًا وَمَا فَاتَكَ مِنْهَا فَلَا تَأْسَ عَلَيْهِ جَزَعًا And he said, whatever has come to you in terms of worldly things, do not go to extremes in happiness. You can be naturally happy. If something good happens to you, of course you're going to be happy. But don't go to such extremes in your happiness. And if you missed out upon something in this dunya, then do not go to extremes in your sadness, right? Keep your eyes on the akhirah. That's more important. The hereafter is more important. وَلْيَكُنْ هَمُّكَ مَا بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ And let your concern be for that which is to come after your death. Don't be too overly concerned with what happens in this dunya, what you get, what you miss out upon. Okay, you know, you can, you can have happiness and sadness. It's natural. But don't go to extremes in any of these things regarding this dunya. And let your main concern be for what is going to happen after death. Focus on the hereafter. Right? So, so many beautiful gems from Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. And there's so much more. Right? But this just gives you a glimpse into the knowledge that he had and the wisdom that he had. And the ability to beautifully convey his knowledge to the people. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to benefit from these beautiful words. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with Ali radiallahu an and all of the sahaba of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Barakallahu feekum. Wallahu alam wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.